Today, a colleague gave me a cake and it's beautiful. I'd really like to share it with you. So I, I'll come a bit closer, you know, and uh, actually it looks really nice, but hmm. it seems that the cake is completely made of sugar, which is quite normal, I guess, because cake is usually just different forms of sugar put together, disguised as other stuff like flour. But basically it's just sugar. And it's, it's important because most of what our brain actually consumes is sugar. And how do we actually gain, get the energy from the sugar? Is by burning it, by recombining the sugar. This is actually a molecule of glucose, right? It has six carbons, six oxygens, and 12 hydrogens. Actually, this isn't glucose. This is, yeah, it's sucrose. It's actually two of this put together, but we'll just make it simpler. This is what actually our brain needs, what it eats. And how do we get the energy out of it? We burn it with oxygen, of course. Yeah. So, I don't know if you actually see it. It's hard to see, but this is very fragile. It really almost falls apart and it would like to recombine with something else. So, when I eat the sugar, it gets into my stomach, then it gets into my blood stream, then from there it gets into my individual cells and the cells they're always hungry for sugar they need a bit of insulin to get inside but at the end they eat up all the sugar and they have to get also some oxygen right and then the atoms recombine and at the end you have a happy cell who then just blows out carbon dioxide and water from the carbon dioxide we breathe out and the water we sweat out or we pee out i guess so yeah, and then we have a lot of it and we have the energy and that's how we actually run and by joining by breaking up the glucose we actually have to put in a bit energy you know to break up something you have to take it apart that takes energy but then when it starts to recombine with the oxygen actually this happens okay that wasn't what i wanted to show but can you hear it when the bond is made when the two atoms snap together the energy which we can hear which we hear as a sound on the microscopic level that's the energy which then is released and do you know how much of these joining happens every second i'll tell you a lot actually every second we recombine within our bodies on average about the number of molecules of sugar, which is the same as the number of sand grains on Earth. And throughout the whole day, you recombine and join molecules in the number, which is roughly on the order of the stars in the observable universe. So we do quite a lot of work without actually knowing. And I'd like to see how it's done. So I'd like to see how the sugar is burnt. So, hmm, I think I'll start with a flame. Uh, it doesn't want to burn. It just melts and turns brown, caramelizes, but it is not burning. Hmm. Do you see it? It's not black. And it's hot actually okay so we need something more and it's actually quite good that you know that the sugar just doesn't burn 
spontaneously upon contact with oxygen because then my cake would just burst into flames and I couldn't eat it when I want. So, normally you have to have some kind of catalyst and for here we can use kind of a really easy catalyst which can be just ash. Now I'll put the small piece of ash onto the cube. Stick, 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 stay there. Okay, now I'll try to light it once again. And this time, I hope that something will happen. And I'm not sure whether it will actually work or not. I'm just hoping the cube actually is burning with a very faint blue... Okay, it's, it's gone out. The big block of sugar, it might be too tight for actually proper combustion to happen. So, uh, it's much better if we will grind it into very, very fine powdered sugar. And I've taken the liberty also to light a whole bucket full of these splinters and put the ash inside so that we have plenty of catalyst in. And uh, yeah, and one more thing, because I want to ensure that it will have a lot of space, you know, for all the gas to get in, I've put a special ingredient which you also put into cakes to make them fluffy. Do you know what that is? That's baking soda. And uh, when you put it into the oven, you need to add a source of heat. So I'll actually... <clears throat> Do you know what this is? Yeah, it's alcohol. And uh, yeah, so I'll put it a bit around, not onto the, not onto the sugar itself. And the brown stuff around, it's actually... It's actually sand, so that the alcohol may properly soak in and then provide the source of heat. And while this will happen in a very short moment, I have a question for you. This one cube of sugar weighs approximately 2.6 grams. And I'm wondering how much energy is stored inside. Now, to have an imagination of what, how we could measure this energy, imagine an athlete who is providing a top performance. Someone like Usain Bolt, let's say. And Usain, you know, he's, he's on the starting point and he's concentrating with all his might and in the next few seconds, in one second, he will have to go up to speed. So that's the maximum, that's the maximum power his muscles will start making. And my question is, if he kept on having this maximum performance, how long could he run at this maximum metabolic rate from just one cube of sugar. I will try to put it on fire. Okay, it seems to be on fire. I don't know whether you see something happening. It might be happening. And I'm really curious about what do you think, how long would Usain last on this one cube of sugar? Now, what is happening here, I'm not sure whether you see it or not, we are starting to build up some strange shapes. Hmm, okay. That's not what I actually expected, but yeah, we'll see how long this lasts. We can clearly see that the sugar is burning, but it's not really fast. There's not much heat going off. So actually, Mr. Usain, if he would to eat this single cube, he would last for 30 seconds at his maximum performance. But, you know, I would really like to see that energy 
released at a much higher rate. You know, I really can imagine how Mr. Usain, when he's starting, when all that energy from the sugar is, you know, just exploding into the muscles and they keep on moving. So I'd like to see a much faster reaction than this. And evidently having a catalyst and having the sugar very well ground is not enough. So what we could improve is the access to oxygen. We need more oxygen. You know, he's breathing really, really, really fast. And although, you know, like 100 meters, we could all, almost run without breathing. You know, it's completely an anaerobic metabolism. But, you know, I'm not that good. So I would have to breathe, you know, from the second second on. So I need more oxygen. So how, how, how could I add more oxygen? I could bring in a flask of oxygen and put it on there, but then I could maybe end like the movie Martian, you know, when they improvised something at the end. So perhaps we could uh, we could make us an improvised device. You know what this device is? It's called a gas burner for camping. It's a very specific device. I'll try to light it on fire. Oh. It actually works. I didn't expect that to happen, but it does. Okay. So now we have a source of heat to actually start the reaction. And we have here a flask full of very fine powdered sugar. Prepare the fire extinguishers. <laughs> 